All right, welcome to Reflex onboarding video. This whole thing should hopefully take you a bit less than 15 minutes of your time. And we'll walk you through everything you need to get started using Reflex, as well as some of our key features like our AI integrations. To begin with, Reflect is a note-taking app that helps you think better. And if you think about how our thinking functions for a second, it works primarily by making associations. These connections between our thoughts, ideas, the encounters we have in our day, everything is pulled together to generate new thoughts and ideas. And fortunately, our brains are quite good at doing this, but unfortunately, our brains are not great at storing this information. And that's where a tool like Reflect can come into play and really turn into a bit of a superpower when we outsource these associations. And you'll find when you do it day to day, it builds somewhat of a second brain quite naturally. So to begin with, if you haven't yet, go to reflect.app slash download and go ahead and download the Mac OS app for whatever processor you have. You can go ahead and download the iPhone and iPad apps if you have them, although I won't be discussing them on this video. And I will be touching lightly on the Chrome and Safari extensions in just a moment. So once you have this downloaded, this is where you will land. It's the daily notes page, and you can think about this as the home base of your notes. You can record pretty much anything in your daily note, like a to-do list, a running log of what happens in your day, including meetings and whatnot. You can record thoughts and ideas that you have, pretty much everything. And you can see on mine here, if I go back to yesterday, we've got uh, some daily reflections that I've done, my to-do list items here that I can kind of unclasp these, and you can see how I've got it categorized into personal, main work, and side projects. Um, so again, I pretty much record everything in my daily note. And if we go up to the reflection and click into my daily reflection page, that is a backlink. So this opens up a new note page here where I have the template for my daily reflection. And down below here, you can see all of the days that I've done my daily reflection. I've got all of them collected going back in time. So if I wanted to reference a reflection from a certain day, I can quickly do that. All right. So let's run through an example here. Let's say that I want to uh, maybe record my daily log. So I'll just have a light in here that says daily log. And uh, then let's see, I've got a meeting here because I've got my calendar connected. So I'm going to click on this and it pulls up this tab. I'm going to clear myself out because I already know I'm on the call. And I'm going to have it create a backlinks note for this meeting and have it add to my daily note. So here I have my meeting now. And I can click on this backlink note. And, you know, if this is a regular ongoing meeting with, or maybe a one-on-one -on -one with this person, I might put in the goals that we have. I might put in some context about that person, pretty much anything. But for this meeting in particular, I'm going to go ahead and take notes within the daily note here. So uh, for this content meeting, let's just say maybe we discuss Q2 goals and brainstormed new content ideas. Oops. Awesome. So, you know, you can see how you can just record a meeting in there and then something else happens. Maybe I'll create another line item that says went to lunch with Jared, who I'm going to backlink because that's a person. And let's say we went to Black Belly, one of my favorite restaurants, and I'm going to backlink that as well. And just to give kind of another idea of how these backlinks work. So if I click into this, you can see here that I've added a tag that it's a restaurant in Boulder, Colorado, a place. So I've also backlinked that. And I just put in a quick note, had the prime rib sandwich, and it was great. So that if I go back or if someone else goes to this restaurant, I know what to recommend. Now, the cool thing is that once you start doing all of this, you eventually form a map of all of your ideas and everything that's in your second brain. And you can visualize this here on the map. You can see all of these things backlinked together. So most of these are my daily notes, and you can see them linked to other entities, whether it's a company or a person. And then if you see all these things floating on the outside unlinked, these are all of my past notes that I've imported from past note-taking apps like Evernote. And I like to import those into Reflect just so that I can search them. And if I need to call on them at any time, they're at least there. And then I'll just do one more example here. Maybe if you have a grocery list, you can just put that in here and turn it into a checklist with, you know, eggs, milk, whatever. Um, all right, so we've gone through explanation of Reflect, gone through download and installing, 
and an explanation of the daily note. Well, let's now talk about the AI integrations, something fairly new that I'm very, very excited about. So just to give an example, I'm going to write something pretty innocuous. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to go skiing. And we can pull up the AI editor a couple ways. You can highlight the text and select the magic stars here, or use command J, the shortcut. And this will pull up the assistant. And you can ask anything in the open text box. And we've also got prompts here below. So these custom ones are ones that I have custom written and saved myself. And the system ones are the ones that Reflect has pre-written for you. So let's go ahead and try one. I'll say rephrase my writing. And the AI assistant is going to just rephrase it for this one in no particular tone down below. This is a pretty simple sentence. But what I want to show you is that you can open up these prompts because we have open sourced all of them. And so you can see how exactly we are instructing the AI to work. And most of them follow this format where you can just have the input in between triple quotes and you can edit this however you'd like. So maybe we want to say to, we want to have it rephrase the writing like a specific person. So let's clone it and we can say rephrase the writing like Matt Levine. And for each of these, we can say rewrite the text in triple quotes below. And let's say in the voice and tone of Matt Levine. And I usually like to say something around, you know, if I'm doing large pieces of text, I'll say, please keep the same information, the order, the structure of the text. Um, but for this, I'll just keep it pretty simple and I'll save that. So then what happens is we can select this again, pull up the AI assistant and somewhere down here. Yep. There we go. You will see it say rephrase my writing like Matt Levine. So that's just one use case, but to go through some examples of the system ones, you can have it act as an editor, fixing your spelling and grammar. It's really great at doing summaries. It's great at listing key takeaways and creating article outlines to speed up your writing. You can really do quite a lot of things with this, just the AI assistant that uses uh, GPT-4 currently at the time of this recording, which is the same technology that OpenAI uses in ChatGPT+. Now, Reflect has another AI integration, which is the Whisper Voice integration. So on the desktop app, you can access that here by clicking on the microphone and it will just start recording something. And on the mobile app, it will happen on the top right hand corner where you can start a voice transcription. And once you do it, you'll see the little box that just disappeared down there that just says that it is transcribing as we speak. And uh, it'll take a little bit depending on how long your voice transcription is, but you can see that mine was quite short. So it already added it here to my daily note under audio memos. And that's just what I said while I was recording there. So the cool thing about this is that it has near human level accuracy. And there's a bunch of different use cases, especially when paired with the GPT-4 AI assistant in the palette editor that I just showed you. So one thing that I like doing is walking down my neighborhood street, or maybe pacing my room, rambling about some topic that I know a lot about. And then I can have it organize those thoughts for me, maybe into an article outline if I'm writing an article. Or maybe I am having a discussion with someone that I want to record, and then I can have it list the key takeaways and whatnot. And you can see, if you imagine this was a whole meeting or something, one of our members actually showed me this, we have an executive assistant command which I'm not going to run right now because this wouldn't work because it's just not grammatically correct sentence down there. Um, but when you run the executive assistant on your meeting notes, it will list all of the key takeaways from your meeting and the action items that you need to do uh, for the next call. So something very, very useful. And uh, again, you can have it, you know, rephrase your writing once you're done. You can have it act as a sparring partner, providing counter examples and counterpoints to your own thoughts. I have it list analogies and historical examples. It really is crazy how much this AI integration can do. So highly recommend playing around with it yourself. And we have a bunch of YouTube tutorials on our YouTube page that shows you different things you can do with the palette editor as well. All right, so let's call that good on AI integrations. I should probably mention shortly, you've seen me using a couple keyboard shortcuts, but uh, you can just pull those up using command slash and it pulls up this menu here. And in the beginning, you'll probably have to reference this pretty frequently, but 
soon you will learn it quite quickly and everything will just come naturally, it really speeds up your note-taking. Okay, so let's talk about the, I should have said Kindle through the Chrome and Safari extensions because we now have Safari, but these are one and the same. So if you go back to this download page and download the extension, when you open the extension page, it will ask you to log in through your Amazon Kindle account. That's how you link your Kindle so that you can sync all of your book highlights and whatnot. And once you do that, I'm going to go to my all notes page here. Um, you can see you can have categories here. So if you click on books, these are all the books that I've imported from my Kindle. It acts as my library. And you can see links, people, acts as a CMS. And if we click on custom here, these are all the tags that we've used. So I can click on company and these are all of the companies that are in my notes. Um, one that I've been into recently is uh, recipes. I'm trying to build kind of like a digital cookbook. Uh, so I've been trying to record all the recipes I do. Um, so that's what happens when you uh, add something with a tag. But going back to the extension here, just to kind of show you an example, this is a, one of our new blog posts from our new content series where we feature people's physical and digital work setups. And so let's say that I'm reading this and, um, you know, I scroll down to the digital tools that Tebow is using and I can just highlight this. And then I can click on the Reflect Chrome extension. And here it will have the title of the page. And this is the text that I've highlighted. I'm going to select my main graph to add it to. Click Add to Reflect. And then now if I go back to All Notes, you'll see it here at the top. We can click into this and it saved it with the original URL. If I want to add a description, I can. It's already got the type as a link for me. And these are my highlights that I saved down below. And the cool thing is, is, if I go back to this article and want to highlight something else, I can highlight this at the bottom and it will just add it to this list as a bullet point. So this is a great way to capture things that you read and find online. And again, then you can go back and search all of your links and it as a directory. All right, we're getting pretty close to the end here. So let me go back to my note. All right, let's talk about preference really quickly. Preferences. If you click on your name here below and go to preferences, there's a couple cool things you can do in here. One that I'll mention that I think is really, really important to set up first is you can set up templates. So the daily reflection I was talking about, I just have this set up as a template so that I can immediately call on it on my daily note. I can just type slash daily reflection and it pulls up this template immediately. It makes it super frictionless to do regular things in your notes. And I actually think this is pretty critical in developing a daily journaling habit. It makes it so easy that it's something I look forward to. Uh, if you go down to your graph settings, um, you can download the recovery kit. You can change your encryption password. Uh, these are the import and exporters. So if you've used one of these past note taking tools, you can import all of your existing notes. And if you do do that, we recommend doing it into a new test graph here, just so that you don't accidentally clutter all of your notes. And should you ever decide to or need to, for whatever reason, you can export all of your notes because we're big believers in data portability. And I guess one thing I should have mentioned on the recovery kit, this should have downloaded when you signed up, but definitely save it somewhere safe. It's the easiest way to get back into your account should you ever lose your encryption password. All right, I'm not going to show you these, but do want to mention that we have just a couple of integrations. We have a Zapier integration, which lets you connect to the APIs of dozens of other applications without needing the code. So you can do cool things like set one up where you can like a tweet and it will save that to your Reflect Notes or forward an entire email thread or maybe even save a Google Doc to your Reflect Notes. And again, we've got a lot of demonstrations of this on our YouTube page. And finally, if you ever need any support, you can always email support at reflect.app. And we highly recommend joining our Discord community, which I will include a link to in the notes of this video. And in there, you can share workflows, see how other people are using Reflect and get other support. And finally, head to reflect.academy where you can learn not only more about Reflect, but more about note taking in general and how you can actually become a better thinker through taking notes and become better at note taking overall. All right, I think that is it. So thanks for watching this and enjoy your time with Reflect.